Madam President, Chairman, distinguished guests, you've just heard that Professor Paul Webley is retiring as director of the school. I've had the privilege of um, serving on his team as pro-director for several years, and today I should like to take this opportunity on behalf of the school management and the school community to put on record our great appreciation of the enormous contribution that Paul has made to the school. Perhaps more importantly, I'd like to convey, for those who may not know Paul well, the character and standing of the man. Paul came to Suez from a distinguished career at Exeter University, where he served as senior deputy vice chancellor. By training, Paul Webley is an economic psychologist who graduated from the LSE with a first class honors degree and a doctorate on children's perception of deception. He's the co-author of some 10 books and over 140 chapters and articles. And his work has explored the contribution that psychology can make to the understanding of problems that have traditionally been seen as the sole concern of economics. Formerly president of the International Association for Research in Economic Psychology, Paul was elected in 2010 as fellow of the Academy of Social Sciences. On his arrival at SOAS in 2006, he set about reversing years of financial deficit and concerns in relation to teaching standards in the school. His infectious enthusiasm and boundless energy quickly built momentum for SOAS's study of the societies of Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. SOAS is a complex place. It's probably the most diverse educational establishment in the world. The school not only brings together students from all across the regions, but from the whole of Europe and North America. And this is because of its expertise and academic distinction. It's politically incredibly lively and sometimes febrile, given the conflicts in the world. Yet Paul was never daunted by the challenges this presented. By sheer strength of character and principle, he made sure that academic freedom is preserved and that SOAS is a place which cultivates tolerance and mutual respect. His determination to ensure that the institution remained a bastion of academic independence was instrumental, for example, in attracting funding from the Pierce Foundation for Israeli Studies and simultaneously millions of pounds from the MBI Algebra Foundation for the SOAS-based London Middle East Institute. Under Paul Webley's directorship, the study of subjects like politics, economics, law, management, development studies has grown apace in line with the burgeoning interest in these fields among undergraduate and postgraduate students from all over the world. The growth in student body has been phenomenal during his period of office. His stewardship of strategic and vulnerable subjects attracted philanthropic support from a range of funding bodies for the study of Japanese Buddhism, Zoroastrianism, and Southeast Asian art to the tune of over 20 million, including endowed academic posts. Without Paul's inspiring and engaging leadership, the school would not be in the position it is today, strong, viable, and distinctive. Paul Webley's championing of the study of Asia, Africa, and the Middle East has been complemented by a wider engagement with international students coming here to the UK. As chair of the Board of Trustees of the UK Council for International Student Affairs, he's taken a national role in relation to the issues that affect all international students, those who return to their countries as potential key players with an impression of the UK in their minds that will influence their views for years to come. Within SOAS, staff morale significantly improved since Paul's arrival. It's difficult to objectively qualify what factors might transform staff motivation, but as someone intrinsically involved in SOAS's life, I have some insights. Paul has given SOAS a sense of direction through a new vision and strategy for the university, both within the school and beyond. He has been a voice of reason, and he combines this with a commitment to ethical behavior. But above all, he's taken an enduring interest in the research and teaching of each and every one of us. Each one of us can attest to his curiosity about the work, the warmth he expresses, the encouragement he provides, and the value he places upon our achievements. Publicly, 
Paul Webley's commitment to the study of Asia, Africa, and the Middle East has been an inspiration and a beacon to the internationalist spirit in this country. His passionate optimism, tempered by a psychologist's dispassionate understanding of behavior and motivation, has been matched by a range of achievements for higher education and for Britain's engagement with the world beyond Europe. Earlier this year, he was awarded a CBE in the New Year's Honours and the prestigious Case Leadership Award in recognition of his significant contribution to the promotion and support of higher education. Privately, many, many individuals in this institution have developed an attachment and an admiration for Paul Webley. We are proud and privileged to work with him. All of us see the consolidation of SOAS with the North Block and the forthcoming centenary as moments that mark the success of SOAS and of Paul Webley as its director. And so it has been with growing alarm that we have become aware of Paul's advancing illness. We have watched his stoical determination to keep on working for SOAS, and we have stood in admiration and in tears. We stand with you, Paul, and we know you'll always be standing with us. <laughs>